Hey, everybody. My name is Danielle. I'm going to put my timer on so I'm not taking up everyone else's time. So the name of my message that the Lord gave me was Live Pure. And as I was studying and in true Jesus fashion, you know how he shows you different things and more things that he wants you to add on to your message. And as I was studying for this um, for the past few, few weeks, um, he spoke to me really uh, about something. And he, this is something I want to just say. And it speaks really deeply to me, and I believe that maybe there's some of you out there today. But he said a sentence, and it, and it hit me like a ton of bricks. And it was, ordinary people serving an extraordinary God. And that, to me, was so encouraging because so many times a lot of us think that we have to have everything figured out. We have to have everything um, in its place, and that comes as you live for the Lord, as you purify yourself. And you got to come to the Lord and say, Lord, here I am. The number one key to a life that is used by Jesus Christ is your availability. As you follow him and as you obey him, he fills you with his spirit. He changes you. That's what he does. That's the work of the spirit. That's the work of Jesus in one's life. I was I'm personally in the book of Judges. I don't know if you guys have your Bibles. Hopefully you do. But I'm just going to touch on a couple of key verses. And there's a couple of, of men that I'm going to talk about that were pure, living their lives pure. And it says, the scripture says that they were filled with the spirit. And they were ordinary men, but they were used in extraordinary ways because they were living for the Lord. And, and he used them. And that, and that blesses me a lot because I'm not one that knows a lot. I'm not, I'm a nobody. But God has changed my life. And you may not understand or you may not get God in, in a little box. You may not always understand him. Or maybe you're kind of on the fence going, I know I've heard about Jesus a lot of times, but I don't really know if it's true. The one fact that I can say that Jesus Christ is true and you cannot argue it is look at my life previously before Jesus Christ and you look at my life now. And you can't deny that there has been a transformation that's taken place in my life because of the purity and God's sanctification in my heart. So if you guys have your Bibles, I want you to open up to Judges chapter 3, verse 15. And it says... Um, The children of Israel cried out to the Lord, and the Lord raised up a deliverer for them. This name is really funny. His name is Ehud. I hope that's how you say his name. This whole Old Testament, um, you hear, you know, the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord, and then they cried out. And I wanted to, I brought that, that verse up because it says that the children of Israel, they cried out to the Lord. And every single time that you read that anywhere, it says right after it, it says, and the Lord heard them and he delivered them. And maybe some of you today need to be crying out to the Lord. Maybe you need to be delivered. Maybe today you've been like, oh, Lord, you know, help me with this thing. Or, oh, Lord, I have a boyfriend and I keep messing up. I keep, you know, sleeping with him. Or, oh, Lord, you know, I have these really good friends and then I go and hang out with the ones that I shouldn't be hanging out with. Read what that verse says. It says they were doing evil, but then they cried out to the Lord, and the Lord raised up a deliverer, and he helped them out. He saved them. And this man named Ehud, he was a man who, um, he was from the Benjamites, and basically their Benjamite means you're um, the son of my right hand. And right hand speaks of um, power and things like that. And this man was a left-handed man, and he's like, man, he could have been like, man, Lord, I'm left-handed. I'm in this tribe that's you know, supposed to be of some sort of power. And I'm sure that he had questions. And just like us, we question the Lord. How come, Lord, you know, I'm not like her? How come, Lord, that I don't understand um, why I'm not being used? And she does this or they get to do that. What's going on with me? I'm sure that was the case with Ehud, the same thing. I'm like son of my right hand and I'm a left-handed man. And the story goes on if you read it on. He went in and he had a dagger um, and they used to hide it on the opposite side. And because you, you drag it out from the opposite side because he was left-handed, he went into this evil king. And he got into the chambers because the men that were protecting him, they, they checked the, the side that they normally carry. So he got past the men, gets out his knife, and he stabs him and he dies. It's kind of violent. But he was, he was a man that was oppressing the, the God's people and he raised a deliverer, a deliverer for him. I'm saying that because exactly what I was saying about him being left-handed. Maybe you're questioning God, and the word says in Psalm 139 that you're fearfully and you're wonderfully made. God doesn't make any mistakes when he made you the way that you look, the things you're interested in, your talents, your giftings. 
everything he can use, and he has a job for you, and he has a plan for your life. There's another man later on down in the scripture in the end of chapter 3. His name is Shamgar. How awesome is that name? All these, weird, all these weird names. But this guy's name means the desolate and dragged off one. And he's not one that many people know about in scripture. And he's a hero. He really is. He's a man who he killed 600 Philistines with an ox goat. And an ox goat is just this metal thing with a sword on the end of it. And he was a herdsman. That was what was in his hand. And God used it. He used Ehud with his left handed. He did something incredible. There was a judge before him. He was filled with the spirit because they lived by the law of the Lord. They, 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 they feared God. And this man, Shamgar, he was one that wasn't popular. You don't hear many people say, oh, I want to be like Shamgar. You hear about like Samson and, you know, all these other men and Gideon and stuff like that. But the Lord really spoke to me about just offering up what has the Lord given you in your hand? What is it that you love to do, and are you using it to further the kingdom of God? That's what I I feel the Lord was telling me in my life. Danielle, what have I given you in your hand? And for me, I personally, I'll tell you guys a little story. I, um, I started playing guitar maybe two and a half years ago, almost three years ago, and I, um, I'm a hairstylist, and I work like 12-hour days and stuff, and I had a dream. It was three nights in a row, and there's this old school song that my parents used to listen to when I was a kid, and it says, like, I'm coming back to the heart of worship. It's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sure a lot of you know that song, and I kept hearing that song over and over again, and three nights in a row, my own voice, I was singing it, and I woke up, and I was like, that is so weird. So hearing your own voice, I don't know if you've ever done that, but it's, like, weird, and so I woke up hearing myself sing, and finally the third night, I was like, Lord, I don't know what's going on with this, you know? So I didn't tell anybody about it. About five days later, I was at church, and this girl comes up to me, and she had a stack of, it was basically like an application form, and there was a check on top of it for $500. And she goes, Danielle, the Lord told me to give this to you, and I'm kind of like, I don't even, she did, her eyes were like super big. She, I mean, that's a lot of money to give somebody just because the Lord told you, and you don't really understand it. And she says, there's a school of worship, and the Lord told me to give this to you, and it's going to pay for your books for your first semester. And I felt the Lord telling me to go to the school of worship. And that was the craziest thing I'd ever done. So I took, you know, I stopped working as much. I went back to part-time, and I went and started singing. Like, everyone in school, like, had been worship leaders for years. They'd been doing that. I had never touched a guitar in my life. I didn't know how to do anything. I never sang in my life. So here I am, and everyone's telling their stories. Oh, I lead worship here, and I do that. And I'm like, I woke up three nights in a row singing. I'm coming back to the heart of worship, and I'm, I think I'm supposed to be here. And everybody's eyes were like, and I was the oldest one there. Everyone's like 18. I'm like almost 30, you know. Not that that's whatever, but you know what I'm saying. So I'm like chilling in the back like, oh, my goodness. So I'll tell you one thing right now. Man, like. It was the scariest thing. I dare you, if you don't play an instrument, I dare you to come up here and play an instrument and lead a song and you'd be like, I don't know what the chords are. Well, just do it. Just sing it. That's what they would do. And you're just sitting there like, I don't know anything. But you know what? Psalm 144 says, he trains your hands for war and your fingers for battle. And you know what? That's the sword that God's given me. That's what's in my hand. What is God giving you in your hand? He will equip you. He will fill you with the spirit and you will change lives because you are filled by him. And he's called you. And maybe some of you feel like the homie with the left hand. Like, how, how am I supposed to, I don't get it. I don't know how to do it. I would, I, my whole back would be drenched in sweat before when I would sing. And I would drop my pick. And I was just so fearful, so fearful. And it's been three years. And I can tell, I mean, Christina knows and, and my sister. And we've been leading worship all over the place. We're working on our first album. I would have never, ever thought this is what God would have for my life, ever. If I just thought, okay, well, I'm going to, you know, he's giving me scissors and a blow dryer, and I'm going to do that. And the Lord did use that for 13 years. He shaped me for women's ministry. He's shaped me to listen to people and to know how to, how to serve people and how to talk about the Lord and speak into other people's lives. He absolutely shaped me for that. But then he called me for something else, and I stepped in. And we always sing that song. You guys know the song, Oceans, you know, Spirit lead me where my feet would never wander. Everybody sings that, and your hands are lifted. Do you really know what you're saying? Do you really mean take me deeper where my feet would never wander? Lead me, God. 
Remember the little boy with the 5,000 people, the hungry people. And Jesus goes to his disciples, hey, where's, you know, we got to feed the people. And they're like, well, we don't have enough money to feed all these people. What did the little boy, boy have in his hand? A little lunch, remember, with the fish and the two loaves of bread. What did the Lord do? He did a miracle. What about David? Slain the Goliath. He'd been a warrior since birth. What did he do? He had a few, a few stones and a slingshot. What did God do? He killed, he killed Goliath. What does God put in your hand? These men, they're ordinary men. They were nobodies, but they were filled with the spirit because they lived their life pure and set apart. The beginning of wisdom is fearing the Lord. That's, that's the, basis, the basis of it all. Because when you fear the Lord, it's not like, oh, I'm so scared of you, Lord. It's a respect. It's, it's Lord, like, I don't really understand, but that's what faith is. I don't really get what you're doing, Lord, but you placed this in my care, and I trust if you've given it to me, you're going to train me to use it, and I'm going to use it for your glory. Don't build, I, I wrote this down. It was just, it spoke so much. Don't just make a living. Make a life by using what God has put in your hand. And today I want to challenge you with that. What has God put in your hand? What is God asking you to do? Is he asking you to leave that relationship? Is he calling you to be a, a, a woman that's set apart for his use? How can you be used by the Lord if you're still living with one foot in and one foot out? You're going to be so unhappy at church because you know you're not doing what you're meant to do. And you're going to be miserable in the world because you don't fit in there. Because they know, they see something's different in you. It's the, it's the light of God that's in your life. But you got to set your life apart. you got to allow God to do a work in your life. I just believe that the Lord wanted me to share this message of, of placing things in our care. But to use the Lord, because I do believe that there's many of you here today that are too fearful to use the giftings that God has given to you. I also believe that it's, it's a hard thing to live your life set apart for Jesus. In Matthew 7, it says, you know, that the road is narrow and few find it to follow the Lord. But wide and broad is the road that leads to destruction and many are on it. It's hard to serve the Lord. Let me rephrase that. It's hard saying no to the world because the spirit is willing and the flesh is weak. Serving the Lord is a joy. Serving the Lord is, is, a, is a burden that is light and easy, but our flesh wants to do what it wants to do. But if you don't come to the Lord and say, Lord, you place this in my hand, and I want to offer it up to you, King of Kings. I want you to do some miraculous thing with it. I know that you, he has started the work, and he's faithful to bring it into completion. This week for me personally, and I'll just share, has been... One of the hardest weeks I've had in a really long time. I recently got married, and my husband's Australian. And, yeah. <laughs> and a few months ago, it was back in around Christmas, and you guys know how crazy it is at Christmas time. The Lord, we felt the Lord calling us to move to Australia. And I was like, oh my goodness, what, you know, then you're. You know how we are as girls. Well, then what does this mean? And then what do we do with that? And then what happens with my friends and all this stuff? So, you know, I left my job. I, um, we have doorkeepers out there. It's a clothing line that my husband and I have started for women. Uh, all this stuff. So what does this mean? What is all this stuff? So we packed up our whole house. We're living in, like, suitcases and all this stuff. And the end of December comes. We're about to, like, leave. And then the Lord showed us that verse in Genesis about you know, Abraham and Isaac and not sacrificing his son. And we, we felt like the Lord was like, I just wanted to test you to see if you're really willing to go. And man, let me tell you, that's like, that's a, that's a purification process that takes place in your life. For the Lord to lead you, and it says that we're changed from glory to glory. With that, I don't know if you know what that means. It means like you should always be changing. You should constantly be the Lord's work in your heart so you're not the same person that you were six months ago. You're not the same person you were two years ago. You're closer to the Lord. You should be moving closer and becoming more like him. And with that, you guys know what that process is. It's a hard process. Remember in Job it says, he knows the way that I shall take. And when he has tested me, I shall come forth as gold. To purify gold, what happens? you got to have a lot of pressure. You have to have a lot of heat. That, that hurts. 
It's, it's hard. You can't explain things. All you got to do is allow God's work to happen. And at the beginning of that verse, he knows the way that I shall take. I don't know what God's going to do. I don't know where God's going to, I'm going to end up, what God's going to do always, but he knows. And that's where we have to start to have that life in purity. Okay, Lord, well, you're asking me to stop working at this place because it's not glorifying you. It's getting me caught up in these things. Okay, Lord, you're asking me to break up with this man because he's not my husband. He, you, you're telling me, but I'm like making excuses. I'm going to, okay, he knows the way that you will take. I don't and you don't, but it's not our job to know. It's his, it's his job. And when he has tested you, you will come forth as gold. It's the Lord that changes you. It's a purification process. So here I am, me and my husband, we're like chilling in boxes, all this stuff. We're like, okay, well, well I guess we're going to go. And then the Lord's like, well, no, I just wanted to see if you were really willing to obey me. Do you know what that feels like? That was the hardest thing in the world. I'm a brand new wife. I just left my job. I'm like, we're over here chilling with no job, chilling in this house with boxes. Now we're not going to Australia. What does that mean? It's, it was the craziest time. So you know what I did? I picked up my weapon. I picked up my guitar. I'm telling you right now that the songs were playing later, but the Lord gave me those songs. The Lord gave me songs that it's like those times when you're like, man, Lord, I don't understand what's going on. This is happening. That's happening. And you can, you can make a big old list of all the stuff. But your word says this. But then God. But you said that those are the days where the Lord will meet you because the word is the final say. It's so hard. And I'm telling you, and I wanted to share that with you guys because that was really hard to pack up everything and say bye to your family, say goodbye to your church. I'm like, oh, I'm not going to be leading worship anymore. I'm like, bye and all this stuff. We feel the Lord. And then we're like, oh, I guess we're not going now. Well, did you really hear from the Lord? Are you sure? It's like all that. And you're just like, I just want to die. I just want to like move, move away where like there's no people and just, you know, you just want to isolate. And there's Satan. He's right there. And it's like that's, but that, I'm saying all of that because you know what? Through all of that, without all of those things happening, without people, you know, misunderstanding me and my husband and what we feel the Lord was telling us to do and nothing, nothing making sense, nothing making sense, those songs would never come about. Those praise and worshiping, it says you praise him in all seasons. I'm learning that. That's me. That's the Lord trying to make gold out of my life. It's so easy to sing other songs. It's so easy when you're having a good day and be like, oh man, Lord, you're so good. And, and he, he always is good. God is good in your hard days too. God is good always. He has plans to prosper you, to give you a future and a hope. When he's tested you, you're going to come forth on top and you're going to make sense. It's going to all make sense because he's trying to change us from glory to glory. So I wrote all those songs and they're blessing people and they're blessing me. And I'm using the gift that the Lord's put in my hand. If I was doing my job, which it's important to have a job. I'm not saying don't have a job. But if I was doing, you know, building my own life, like that quote I said earlier, you know, don't just make a living, make a life by using what God has put in your hand. If I was doing hair 12 hours a day, I wouldn't be able to, to, to write these things. I wouldn't be able to do what God's wanting me to do. My next chapter, there's different chapters in life that God wants to do in your life. And it starts by purifying yourself, humbling yourself and asking God, you know, Lord, what is it that you want me to do? I'm not qualified. I don't understand everything. But I know that you're leading me. I know that it's by your power and by your strength, not by mine. And he'll help you every step of the way. And now I, don't, I still don't know what's, what's going to become. I, I still don't have all the answers. But you know what? I'm worshiping the Lord. I'm praising him in the hard times. I'm praising him in the, in the bad times. On um, Wednesday, my dad called me, and I met up with him. And he's... I. I We've had a long kind of a thing. Um, my dad had been backslidden for a long time. He used to be a pastor. And he was running from the Lord. And um, he's recently come back to the Lord. And um, he found out that he has cancer in his lungs. He had cancer on his tongue. And they had to chop half of his tongue off. And that was a really crazy thing. And he that's what brought him back to walking with the Lord. That's a really crazy story. But on this week on Wednesday... My dad told me that they found more cancer on his lungs and that he has about two years to live. And man, um, I'm just going to say that 
this week was, there's just so much that, w- that was going on in me personally. But you know what? It, it, really, it really made me look at life eternally. Because you guys, we don't have, we're, our life is just but a vapor. If you offer up your life and say, Lord, I don't know how many years I'm going to be here. I don't know what kind of impact I can have. But Lord, use me so that people know that you're real. Use me in these dark times, in times that people are, they just passed, you know, it's the gay thing yesterday and all that. We're living in a time where people don't fear the Lord. That's why they do what they do. That's why people live with their boyfriends. That's why people are having sex. That's why people kill each other. That's why people do all kinds of evil things that you can't even think of because people don't fear the Lord. It all comes down to that. But us, we're meant to be a royal priesthood. We're meant to be ones that are pure. We're meant to be ones that praise him in the good times and the bad. And you know what? That's what God wants to do in us. God wants us to lift up our hands and go, you know what, Lord, thank you. Thank you for what you're doing in my life. I want to live my life to be usable for you, Jesus. So when the time comes, you're ready for his, his use. I want that, and I, want, I, I believe that that's what he wanted me to share on today. I, I watched this video the other day, and um, it really spoke to me so much. And maybe you guys have watched it before, but it was this Olympic runner. I don't even know why I found it. But it was this Olympic runner in 1992, and his name was Derek, and he was running the 400-meter sprint, and his hamstring snapped while he was running and it's they had like the sad music and I was like bawling my eyes out but this is the part that's the craziest and I and I really think it's it's so important the man was running he trained and trained and trained you know you're on a diet you're doing all this stuff to be like in the Olympic race and then the gun shot off and they're running and you're staying in your lane so you're not disqualified and his hamstring snaps. And he said in his interview, he's just like, I was so angry. I was so mad. How could this happen to me? I've trained. I've done all of these things to be in this race. How could this happen to me? And then all of a sudden in the video, you see this man like barge onto the racetrack. And you see all of these like security and like, you know, judges holding all this, this guy back. And it was his father. And um, he comes over to him, and the guy couldn't even walk. Like, his face was in so much agony, and he, could, he couldn't even take a step. Sorry. And um, Derek, the runner, said that he was in so much pain, and all he felt was a tap on his shoulder. And then someone embraced him, and his dad carried him across the finish line. And to me, that spoke so much to me, because that's the Lord to us. The Lord's called you into your own lane. The Lord has called you to carry out something. He's placed it in your care. You, you were created the way he made you for a purpose in in this world. To carry out and point to him. And when we do get tired and we do get slammed and we do have Satan that's on our back, the Lord says, keep running the race. Stay in your lane. Don't get disqualified. Don't go to the left. Don't go to the right. Don't fear. Keep staying in your lane, even if you had to be like that dare guy. He was like barely walking, and, and who came to, to, to finish the race with him? His father, just like the Lord. He's the starter, and he's the finisher of the race. It starts with Jesus, and it ends with him. And that's what the Lord wants to do in our lives today. He wants us to offer, offer up ourselves and say, God... Whatever it is that you have for me, Lord, I open up freely. And that's also another thing that we always say when we're worshiping. We lift our hands up because we want to offer up our will to the Lord in a full abandonment. We don't just do that because for no reason. We do that because we say, Lord, your will be done. Lord, we're available. That's the number one thing. I started out with that, and I'll say it again. That's the number one thing God wants is our availability, our availability. He doesn't ask you to have it all worked out. He doesn't ask you to be perfect. He says, you come just as you are and watch what I can do in a life of a woman or a man who sets their life apart and allows me to train you up for battle, to help you stand when this world doesn't fear God and doesn't even believe he's real. He's called us for this time right now to shine brightly. You remember the story of Gideon when he went into the the battle with 300 men against like 10,000 men. I feel like that. Do you feel like Gideon sometimes? Lord, how's this going to happen? How's this going to work out, Lord? And the Lord's like, don't trip. I got this. 
over and over and over again, we have to relearn these things because we're humans. We want things to, to work out in our minds. But it wasn't until the Lord said, okay, Gideon, go down and surround them and break your earthen vessels. And then the light sh- sh- would shine brightly. And then the men woke up and they killed each other. And that's a crazy story. But it wasn't until the vessel was broken that the light shined the brightest. In your hardest times, that's when the Lord's going to come and meet you. That's when the Lord's going to come like that man's father, and he's going to walk alongside you, and you're going to finish. You're going to complete that thing, because he's faithful to start something, and he finishes it. He doesn't just leave you there. And don't you believe for a second that Satan's leaving, you know, like, oh, the Lord's left me high and dry. The Lord's forgotten about me. Oh, the Lord, because that's what Satan likes to do. Those things aren't true because the word of God says he's faithful to complete it. He will walk with you. The hardest days, the darkest nights, the sun always comes up the next day. Dawn always comes. The Lord always meets you. He will help you to finish the race. Just stay in your lane. Don't give up. Allow the Lord to do a work in your life and to shine the brightest, just like Gideon. That's the brightest that you'll shine is in your darkest hour because people... This world goes, show me, and then I'll believe you. But the Lord says, trust me, and then I'll show you. That's what faith is. You can't see it, but you know that it's real. And you, as the Spirit leads you deeper, as that song says, Spirit lead me where my feet would never wander. As your feet go where God is calling you, where you, you would never go that way. There's no way I'm doing that. If the Lord gave you out like a blueprint of your life, you go, that ain't going to happen. Nope, nope. Nope. And the Lord's like, that's why I don't tell you anything. (laughs) I give you one step. And then after that one step is completed, I give you the next step. And after step two is completed, then I do. And I hate that he does that. And he knows. And we talk about it all the time. But he still, he doesn't care. He's like, well, that's just the way that it is. But that's how faith is built. You want to be a woman of faith? Obey the Lord. You want to be used by God? Become available for his service. You want to be used by God? Purify your hearts and say, Lord, I'm available. Whatever it is, Lord, lead me and I will follow you. That's why these three judges and judges, they were raised up because they were, they were set apart for, for the Lord. They were used for service. They were filled with the spirit. There was three things that, that they did. <clears throat> they were filled with the spirit of God. The word of the Lord was in them. And they were available. And those are the three things that we need. I'll leave you guys with this. I know I'm, I'm ending a little bit early, but I think this is all that really the Lord wanted me to share with you guys. This verse kept playing over and over and over and over again in my mind yesterday as I was watching that video and all that stuff with the, with the father helping his, his son who was just broken down. But you guys all know this verse, but I want you guys to really think on it. 2 Timothy 4, 7 says, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Finish well. This is not a sprint. This is a lifetime that's dedicated to the service of our king. It doesn't take one lesson. It takes a lifetime of lessons for him to transform us from, from this woman to a godly woman. It's a constant thing that God will continue to purify you. You can look to the left, you can look to the right and compare yourself to people, but God's doing something else in you. And that's why he says, I've called you individually. I have made you guys uniquely. You're fearfully, you're wonderfully made. He doesn't throw us all in a batch and say, you guys all should be the same. He's called us all uniquely with different giftings, different different, gifts. things that, that, that make us all different. And that's what is beautiful because it shows the Lord and his creativity. And he wants us to finish well. But you got to offer your heart up to him. You got to offer your life up and say, today, you know, I've been kind of walking, you know, on the side. I've been kind of like, you know, just, I don't know. I'm not really on fire like I used to be. But that's what the Lord wants to do today. Maybe that's you. And you know what God's calling you to do. You know what God wants you to step into fully, not just doing it halfway. Offer up your weapon to him. What, what is it that God's put in your hand? It's changed my life from me waking up, singing that song, to writing my own songs through hurts, but knowing, man, God, you were there. You are here. 
I'm going through this, Lord, but I'm going to sing about you because you're good. That is what is changing me. I won't change on my own. There is no person on this earth that is good. Only he is good. So for, for God to change me, Danielle, into a woman that's going to praise him in the hard times, he's going to allow the pressure. He's going to allow the pain. He's going to allow those things because that's what keeps me looking what? At heaven. Looking towards the kingdom and investing in the kingdom. We're not going to live here forever. Don't, don't invest everything in this earth because you're not staying here forever. You're but a vapor. Invest your talents. Invest your giftings. Invest your life in a kingdom that's going to count in the end for eternity. Finish the race. Fight the good fight. Stay in your lane. And when you're broken down, God will meet you. And he will run with you to finish the race. Just like that man. I'm going to leave you with this. But remember what I said. We are ordinary people. But we serve an extraordinary God. There's no limits on him. Amen.